Hi, I'm Jeannie Raffa. Welcome back to the fourth in my series about the dream theaters of the soul. Today we're really going to be digging deep into a layer of the psyche that is generally not very accessible to the average ego. This layer contains the basic foundational creative energies of your psyche and everybody's psyche. We all contain an unconscious feminine side and that is called our anima and an unconscious masculine side that is called our animus and everybody has both. And the more unconscious they are, these powerful forces, the more they have the ability to influence our behavior in ways that we don't understand and may not even like. So in order to get in touch with our animus or anima, we can study our dreams very closely and see the characters that show up as men or women that are very strange and unusual and that we're especially attracted to and fascinated by. Today we're going to be talking about this fourth theater, the anima and the animus. Now I'd like to show you an image that depicts this pair very beautifully in the psyche. There on the left is a woman in blue with a crown over her head. She's the queen. This, by the way, is a very old alchemical image that appeared in a book on alchemy um, that was written probably during the Middle Ages or before. The queen is a symbol of the feminine foundation of the psyche, the anima or the soul, that physical beautiful, sacred life that we have, this miracle of life. We're in this room because of her. We're walking around and talking and thinking because of her, our mother, the great mother, sometimes called the goddess, the great goddess, the mother goddess. This is the image of our feminine soul. And her symbols are the moon because she loves the soft light. Look at her, what color is she dressed in? Blue, of course, the queen of heaven. And under her feet is uh, more moon and some watery looking because her symbol is the, the moon and water. And she's standing opposite the king. And he's got the sun over his head. And he represents the masculine foundation of our psyche, the animus or animus or animus however you pronounce it. U.S. in Latin means masculine. He is the unknown, unconscious, masculine foundation of our psyche and all the things that masculinity represents and has represented to humanity for thousands of years. As I say, everybody has both. Now, it doesn't matter what gender we are. Because if your ego, like mine, identifies primarily with as feminine, then you have a powerful unknown masculine side called your animus. And you need to become aware of him because he's the gatekeeper to the next level for you. You need to not only become aware of him, but you have to develop the qualities he represents in your life. If you identify primarily as masculine, then you have a powerful archetype in you that is largely unconscious in people who identify with the masculine, that is your feminine soul, your feelings, your emotions, your tender side, your, the side that is more uh, subjective and more willing to listen to her body. And you need to learn to do that if you identify with masculinity. And this is an inevitable stage of growth in the life of every individual. Jung said often that starts around the age of 37 midlife, that kind of crisis and inner conflict about the masculine and the feminine. 
I'd like to share my dream about the animus, and I call it the rejected suitor. Um, this was dream number one. didn't realize then what an issue I had with my masculine side. I thought getting a college degree, getting my doctorate degree, teaching college was a very, I had a very well-developed masculine side as far as I knew. But there was something missing and this dream showed me what. I'm in a dark hotel lobby. Andrea, my friend that I know in Waking Life, has just gotten married and she's spending her honeymoon here. And her new husband, who's dark and fiercely good looking, keeps grabbing me as I'm trying to drink from a water fountain. Well, I'm attracted to him. Very good looking guy. I remember him still. <laughs> Sorry, darling, I do. <laughs> You know, when you write it down, it tends to stick. Um, but I'm afraid of him. And Andrea is afraid I'll attract him and she'll lose him. And I don't want to hurt her. So suddenly, he pulls me away quickly from the water fountain through a night so dark that I can't see a thing. And half of me wants him to kiss me, but the other half doesn't want to hurt Andrea. So he starts to kiss me by the edge of the road and just then, a bus pulls up right beside us. And a middle-aged, hag-like woman with long dark hair is the driver. And she wears a thin, transparent robe through which I can see her flabby body. And she's sadly and sinisterly leering at me as she fondles her left breast. Well. I'm afraid of her. And Andrea's husband says, come on, you know you want it, this is love. And I say, if this is love, I'll have none of it. Just like the woman in our image. And poor guy, he's got flowers and everything, a tuxedo, he's in Venice probably, you know. I was afraid to befriend this man. He was very attractive, and that often lets you know that you're dealing with your anima or your animus. They would be somebody that you would identify as the opposite of how you identify. If, if you identify as female, it would be a male. And if that's a very fascinating person who is either tormenting you or giving you a hard time or abusing you, or even if he's attracting you, either way, this is an unusual male figure in my dream, and there's so much energy in this figure that I think of this kind of dream as taking place in the theater of the anima or animus. Again, let me tell you a bit about some of the symbols in this very quickly. For years I'd known I wasn't being my true self, and the first image in the dream told me why. This fascinating man wouldn't let me drink from the fountain. What did that mean? Jung said the fountain is an image of the soul as the source of the inner life and spiritual energy, and that the need for a fountain arises in a dream when the inner life is inhibited and dried up. Ouch. And there was a shadow in that dream, wasn't there? The bus driver. And if I didn't learn to find a way to the depths of my soul and quench that need to be who I really was, I could end up just like her. A woman driving a bus, a symbol of the collective, to this, with the, containing the same kinds of people, going to the same collective hotel, where the people who are there do the same kinds of things. Look at us all here in this hotel. Why are we here? For the same thing. It's a symbol of the collective, the group. The hotel is and the bus is. And this woman was still driving a bus after, at the age of 47, just going with the collective crowd, going where other people were going, not going my own way. You get it? 